everyone. Thanks for that introduction, Chrissy. Very, very good of you. Um, and thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to the Encounter story uh, this morning. Uh, Encounter is a dedicated frontier greenfields exploration company uh, with a focus on Northern Territory and Western Australia, looking for copper and critical minerals. Now, the snapshot uh, of, of Encounter, the, the, probably the, the really important thing here is the team and the exploration team that we've assembled. So Dr. John Ronsky and Peter Buick have attracted some tremendous uh, young, dedicated and very highly capable geologists into our company. Um, uh, Sarah James and, and uh, Mark Brody are here today on the booth and please do come and see them and, and they've got a team underneath them who are some of the leaders in their field. So they've been able to deliver the exploration programs, operate remotely, and really cost effectively um, and enable us to, to uh, get an incredible um, bang for our buck when we're exploring. Uh, the other two things probably to note, we've got a sound cash position over $7 million uh, in the bank and that's supported by partnerships with South32 and IGO who are spending large, uh, in making large investments on, on projects in partnership with us. And also that the board and management are strongly committed to the company and have invested significantly over the years and control a, a little under 15% of the company. So this is the project portfolio. It is a very, very extensive portfolio and I won't be going through it all today. Um, as I said, we've got those partnerships with South32 uh, and uh, IGO looking for copper. Um, and I'll touch on the South32, some of the uh, uh, results late last year that they, uh, they achieved in that first pastoral program at the Jessica uh, and Carrara projects. Uh, we've got a 100% um, owned project in, in the Patterson province uh, that we've explored Lamel over many, over many years where we've intersected high grade copper gold and uh, IGO has been getting some encouraging results at our Patterson province uh, project with them. We did some drilling late last year at the Sandover Copper project but most of the presentation today is going to be about what's happening in the west of Runter, which is a new critical minerals province in Australia um, and things are moving very rapidly out there. So you can see that there at the WANT border, it's a very remote part of Australia and very underexplored. So there's our, our I guess, our, the overview of our, what we're trying to do here. Go into Central Australia, apply new technologies, new techniques, move really early onto new government data sets uh, and have a terrific team to be able to go in there uh, and explore aggressively and effectively. The commodities we're chasing, I won't spend too much time on them. The primary focus has been copper and being in the West Arunta, uh, which uh, has seen significant discoveries of niobium and, and rare earths in, in recent years, has meant that we're in very, very much exposed to, to what's going on out there. So maybe they'll, I'll move on to, to the, to the uh, uh, Aileron project in the West Arunta. That is a massive land position that we control in this district. Um, we were the company that drilled the very first hole into this belt, and that's the Hosky anomaly, uh, named after Terry Hosky, the geophysicist who, who brought those anomalies, those magnetic anomalies on that major uh, north, uh, northeast trending structure uh, to our attention. Uh, we attracted Newcrest in as a partner. They've uh, uh, funded and managed, uh, funded the exploration. We managed it for the first two years, and we, we got a rig out there in 2020, and we drilled the first hole into that. The rig uh, had some issues and we stopped that hole at about 157 metres and when we got the assays back it had very high grade from a first hole into a 100 kilometre wide belt. It had rare earths up to 0.8, it had niobium anomalism in it, it had gold, it had copper. I gave a, a hell of a lot of encouragement to what we were doing. We finished that hole in May last year and we went through into a mineralised carbonatite containing rare earths and niobium on that structure and then we subsequently drilled at Crean, Hurley, Emily and Green and got mineralised carbonatites at all of them and at the same time we've had WA1 see that right there at our, our southern border drilling out what is probably the most significant uh, niobium discovery in, in decades uh, um, and that runs right up to our, our tenement boundary and I'll talk a little bit more about that. One of the things that's been really important for our, um, uh, when you're going into new belts is getting new regional data sets. Now we've flown a very large magnetic survey across that belt. You can probably see where, it, where it, uh, uh, the resolution's quite, quite high in the centre of that uh, image. We also flew one of the largest Falcon gravity surveys uh, committed to by a, a junior exploration company across that uh, last year and that's uh, revealed some, some pretty incredible anomalies out in the eastern part of the project which I'll touch on at the end. 
So let me just zoom into that uh, Looney, Emily Green, Joyce area in the southern part of the, uh, the tenement, uh, tenement package. Um, the outline there provided by WA1 of what they're interpreting as their carbonatite, uh, shown in that uh, yellow uh, uh, dotted outline. Our Emily Green and Joyce targets shown there as magnetic lows along those key structures. Now, we've, we've been, uh, it's very early days, we've been doing reconnaissance drilling at a number of these targets. We're under, starting to understand what, how, to, how to target these uh, mineralised carbonatites. One thing, unsurprisingly, is that they're coming up some of the major structures and the key structural intersections are really important. Uh, uh, in late last year, uh, we did our first uh, drilling at Emily and we hit high grade near surface niobium and rare earths uh, at that prospect, about one to two kilometres uh, from, from Looney. The targets that are coming up to, to be drilled this year are the green target, which you can see there, that oval, -look -shaped feature, oval shaped feature sitting at that intersection of those major structures of the, uh, the Stromness and the uh, interconnecting fault between the uh, endurance. That looks very much like it's some sort of intrusive body and given the context of what's happening around it we, we've got a uh, high confidence that we might find some niobium and, uh, uh, and rare earths associated with that and the drilling that we've done at our most eastern drill line there which you can see just next to that open arrow um, had some pretty significant um, uh, uh, niobium and rare earths in it so uh, Joyce is also another target you can see a series of these structures which we've been able to map out of the uh, regional magnetics and uh, gravity surveys that we've flown to give us high confidence that that's something pretty interesting happening there too. So we've got a heritage survey coming up in the next, uh, in the next couple of months and we've got to be uh, testing that with an air core program uh, um, starting in, in um, probably around May, June. Now, the, the, using Aircore to quickly, cost-effectively test these targets, I'll show you the next, uh, the next slide why we think that's going to be so successful. That drill hole there from Emily, which is uh, drill hole uh, EAL098, you can see the, the, uh, core, the, um, uh, rock, uh, the chips from the, uh, from the RC drilling. Uh, the 12 metres at 2.3% niobium, with pretty significant rare earths as well. Um, you can see an air core rig is going to get through that and it's probably going to get, get us into that primary carbonotype which this drill hole extended into. Now that mineralisation went all the way to the end of hole, uh, 130 metres at 0.7% niobium. So uh, I'm not going to uh, explain too much about the niobium market at the moment, but the price of niobium is about five times the price of copper. So if you want to, to look at how much metal uh, is in that sort of uh, drill hole, it's, it's pretty significant. You can see the, the most western hole of Looney, um, also another significant intercept. Uh, we're going to see these things pinch and swell along these structures uh, and Encounter's got some terrific targets that are going to get tested in the next, uh, next few months. So just zooming about five kilometres north to this, this original drill hole. You can see Hosky there. You can, that's the, the drill hole, the magnetic anomaly that we targeted in the first drill hole into this entire belt. Um, it, was, it was fascinating, as I said, we, we extended through that, that magnetic anomaly into the structure and where we drilled mineralised carbonatite. We stepped over two kilometres where we drilled the crean, uh, the crean target and we got some uh, 68 metres at 0.8% niobium. And, and if you look at that uh, drill plan, you'll see again that drill hole is, the most, uh, is completely open to the west towards that magnetic low north of, of Hosky. That's going to be another one of the targets for the Air Corps rig when it, uh, when it turns up on site. Um, we stepped over another 1.2 kilometres uh, and we drilled a, a section of drilling through, through that at, at Crane where we drilled a depth extensive carbonotite for 282 metres and we finished the hole in mineralisation. I'll touch on that in a, in a second. And then once again we stepped over another three kilometres and drilled Hurley um, which was based on a gravity target and drilled a mineralised carbonotite again. I mean this doesn't happen in regional exploration when you go out and do a reconnaissance program in a, in a new belt there's an incredible amount of mineralisation and carbonatites coming up in this, uh, in this neck of the woods and the structures uh, are alive and we're starting to get a bit of a handle on how can we can target the best parts of these, uh, these features. So this, I'll just show you that, um, that section through Crane. We, ent we entered it at about 65 odd metres and we drew it for 280 metres and we stopped it in mineralisation. The whole, whole averaged out at about half percent niobium and there's zones there going 1% niobium. Now there, there's the two producing primary niobium mines in the world. Niobec produces about 0.4% niobium and Catalao 2 in, in, in uh, Brazil produces about 1% niobium. So you can see these sort, of, these sort of grades in a first drill hole into there are pretty, uh, pretty significant. Uh, the carbonatite itself will zone both laterally and vertically. Uh, we've got further drilling planned there this year to, 
to really get to, to understand what is the orientation, what are the controls, um, and we're doing some early cytometallurgical work to understand how, how, how this might treat. So it's, um, it's the start of uh, a process where we want to systematically go through all these targets um, and understand both, I guess, the size, the grade, and also the metallurgical treatment that uh, might be applicable to them. Hurley was that other target. I won't go into it. We drilled a series of holes. We had some trouble getting through cover. Though all the holes that got through cover intersected a carbonatite. The best hole was the most eastern hole there at 74 metres at half percent, and which is completely open to the, uh, to the east and north and south. So there'll be further drilling done there this year. So before I leave Aluron, that most of that drilling's happened in what is the, uh, the western part of a very large land position that we control out here. Um, this Falcon Gravity Survey, which we committed to about this time last year and flew in, in, in May last year, has been a, uh, in, uh, an incredible data set to, to enable us to target in this, in this belt. You can see some of those structures ripping through um, very clearly, both in gravity and magnetics, telling us they are, they are very, very significant features. I've talked about Joyce and Green and Emily um, uh, in the central part of that, but those anomalies that, that jumped out of that data set in the Falcon in the eastern part of the project at Mawson, Wordy, and particularly Percy. That is a six milligal gravity anomaly going into a background, sitting at the intersection of two major structures. That is a really high quality IOCG and uh, or carbonatite target. There's not a drill hole in, in anywhere near it. Uh, we've got an EIS co-funded grant, and we'll be drilling that in um, uh, uh, com commencing in April. So we've got heritage clearance, we're, we're, we're good to go and we've pushed the track to Mawson, we'll complete the track out to Percy and we'll be testing that target which is um, going to be fascinating. So a lot going on, um, we will be, uh, the Air Corps rig will be there in, in, in May, June, the Diamond rig will be there in, in, in late March, early April. We've got a heritage survey where we want to do, test a number of these new targets that we've identified and the second half of the year will be about quantifying the, uh, the size of, of these, these series of carbonatites and understand the grade and, and, and the tonnage distribution within them. And we'll be doing work in the background to understand the metallurgical characterisation and understanding how this, this sort of material will be able to treat. So while that's happening, we've got significant investment going on by our partners. Last year, over $5 million was invested by partners, uh, South 32 and IGO, on projects uh, together with Encounter. IGO drilled some really interesting copper um, in an Air Corps and Diamond program they've done in the Patterson province. And South 32, who are our, our major partner in the Northern Territory, have got a, a very large land position and drilled an eight-hole diamond drill program last year. Um, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, about that. So that's our land holding in the Northern Territory. We own the extension of, of the, uh, uh, of the Aluron belt into the uh, at, that I've just been talking about into the Northern Territory. That's, that's ground we've picked up um, uh, over 12 months ago. We did some drilling at Sandover late last year and assays are coming in the, uh, in the probably late March, early April. Uh, but South 32, where Jessica has been operating last year, one of the things where we, where we partner with these, with these major mining companies, and they can come in, they drilled, they drilled about 7, 000, over 7,000 metres of diamond drilling. Um, and in that first program at, uh, at Zeta, uh, up in the north of the project there, you can see coincident magnetic gravity feature on the margin of what we're interpreting is potentially a major intrusive body. Looking for an IOCG, the first hole they drilled intersected um, intense pervasive red rock hematite alteration with chalcopyrite in, the, in quartz carbonate veining. I mean, for a first hole into a new belt, there's probably not a drill hole within 50 metres of this thing, uh, 50 kilometres of this thing. Um, they, we quickly turned around, they drew a second hole 1.3 kilometres away, um, and that had chalcopyrite and bornite also in the, in, in the veins. This is a large new mineral system. Uh, we think that's occurring here. Uh, looking at how geophysically we can explore that from, from, from this point um, and we're expecting further activity at Jessica uh, this year to be stepping up with, uh, with drilling planned to follow up the geophysics. So just to wrap up, major portfolio of 100% owned projects, partners spending big, big dollars on our, on our projects at the same time. We're one of the most ambitious exploration companies on the ASX. We're in a new province in the West Toronto which is having an incredibly high uh, drilling success rate. Um, and we're well funded to deliver this program that's about to, uh, about to kick off. So thank you very much for your time.